Let's talk about the component life cycle. I'm so excited to talk to you guys today about the component life cycle in React. It was a concept or the different life cycle methods are something that I struggled when I was first learning React for a while. So I wanted to take you through the different ones and kind of break them down for you so you can easily know which ones to use and when to access each one. Always let me know down in the comments what you wanna see more videos of, subscribe to see more of these kind of videos and come say hi to me on Instagram and let's build a community and get to know each other. Okay, let's get started. Before we can talk about different methods in the component life cycle, I think it's important to understand what is the component life cycle and why do we use it? Every component has its own life cycle when it's created, rendered on the DOM, mounted, and unmounted. This is what we refer to as the component life cycle. React provides hooks or different kind of methods that allow you when you're creating your application to decide on what happens at specific given points throughout the component's life cycle, before it mounts, before it unmounts, and that really gives you control to better utilize when your component should be doing uh, different kind of things and what they should be doing at that point in time. Let's start with component will mount. It's kind of funny we're starting this one with this one actually because it was depreciated in React 16.3 in early 2018. But I do think it's still important to talk about it because it is a very commonly used method and having familiarity into why different people use it or if you're working on a different kind of coding project together as to why others are using it would be really beneficial to you. Component will mount is executed right before the component is rendered. The problem with this is there's at that point in time, there's no component to work with on the DOM. So it gives you little flexibility as to why you would use component will mount because it's not mounted on the DOM. So there's not very much you can do with it at that point. However, the one area that this will or would have come in handy is when you are working with an API or any setup that can only be done at runtime. And usually this is if you are connecting to a different external API or working with Firebase, then component will mount might come in handy. But otherwise, you're rarely going to use it, so don't put too much focus on component will mount. Component did mount, though, is one of the most popular lifecycle methods out there. And that's because component did mount is called right when the component did mount to the DOM, which kind of it sounds like. Right when the comp component is mounted to the DOM and shows up on screen, what do you want this component to do? This method is so commonly used because right when your component is mounted to the DOM or shown on the screen, you can tell it what to do. And especially this will come in handy if you're using different kind of Ajax requests or fetch requests or anything where you're working with an API and trying to display different kind of things or working with promises. Um, using component did mount will really come in handy. As well, this is once again, because at this point you're able to do things that you wouldn't have been able to do before it mounted, before it was on the DOM. And using component did mount will kind of be like a safe um, safeguard or safe keep that your API won't run or your Ajax request won't run until your component actually did mount on screen. And if it didn't mount on screen, don't run the API or the fetch or Ajax request. Component will receive props. Component will receive props is really one of those that is exactly what it sounds like. The component will receive props method will run every time that that component receive new props. Should component update. This method is used when to tell React if the component should or should not re-render. If you're re-rendering your component or you have a component that's going to re-render a lot, but maybe necessarily doesn't need to be re-rendered every time that it currently is, using, um, using should component update will really help because if your component's constantly re-rendering, it will slow down your application. So using this method will help reduce that by only rendering uh, when it's actually needed to. Component did update. Component did update is executed when the new updated component has been updated in the DOM. And this is really good when you're working with third-party libraries to make sure that these third-party libraries also update and reload themselves as well. Component will unmount. This component is the last method in the React lifecycle components and it's exactly what it sounds like this method will be called right before the component unmounts from the DOM and the purpose of it is or the use of it is it will do up any kind of cleanups that need to be done before the component leaves the DOM uh, for example on a logout the user details and auth tokens can be cleared right before the component unmount I hope you all enjoyed this video on the react lifecycle methods and I hope you gave you a bit of a deeper understanding into when they're used I try to keep it pretty um, 
um, not going too in depth because at the end of the day, as long as you're aware of what is out there for the component lifecycle methods, Google can become your best friend. And I think just having kind of a really basic understanding of each lifecycle method will really help with your developing. And if you aren't sure which one to use, at least you know which ones you can Google and which ones are out there. As always, give this video a thumbs up if you want to see more like it. Let me know down in the comments below and I'll see you all soon. Bye everyone.